Hello there. What's going on, everyone? Today, I'm going to be bringing to you a Starter Republic fleet build, and this one is going to be a little different uh, because I've had some requests to uh, try and do a build if somebody was only able to get a single starter. Uh, and, well, you can't really do a full build if you only have a single starter, and that's one of the things I talked about in my fleet video. So I decided to uh, kind of enhance it a little bit more and say, well, what if you just had a single starter plus an upgrade kit plus uh, a squadron pack? You know, could you do a 400-point build there? And, and while you, you technically you can, it's not really a build I'd recommend. But if that's all you have, uh, kind of kind of go with that. Um, so we're going to be using Ryan Kingston's fleet builder. I'm going to be doing a new Republic fleet, and uh, and and we're going to be using some starter uh, ships. Now uh, I'm going to run through this. Also, the uh, if you guys are new here, the uh, Life Day giveaway is still running. It did not end at Christmas. Uh, there's still two more giveaways. Uh, one will be at the end of this video. One more will be coming before the end of the year. So make sure you stay tuned for that. You just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment to be entered to win any of my giveaways. All right, so uh, we're going to start off. We've got one acclimator and two uh, consulars to be able to uh, use. And, uh, and, and, and this is one of those things where I have to take a change to my normal approach for fleet building because we're trying to get to 400 points. And it's not easy to do with only one starter. It's almost impossible to do with only one of a starter and a, and a, and the squadron pack and an upgrade card pack. So it's uh, it's a little a little trickier to do. I think most people, you know, before they got uh, you know and maybe an extra squadron pack or whatever would want to do, have gotten a, a second starter, so you have a little bit more variety. You're also getting squadrons in the starter as well, and then you're going to get your dice and all that other stuff. But but for this one, I'm going to go with the acclimator two uh, because one of the things I will do in a lot of my builds is I, I try to make the one ship that's going to be maybe my my biggest what I'll call my big shooty ship like the main ship that's going to be uh, my, my you know all, my money maker uh, my money maker ship is one I don't know put the, a lot of upgrades on and a lot of times I'll have one ship that I put a lot of upgrades on but the rest not so much and, and in this case to try and fill it up we're going to have to put a lot of upgrades on all three ships uh, to try to fill up the points, and that's obviously not not my favorite thing to do, but but we're gonna make it work. Um, so here's here's how we're gonna do this. Now the Acclimator two, one thing that's nice about it is that it's got an extra die in the front arc. It's got six total dice in that front arc, so we can do a little bit more uh, more of a frontal shot with this particular one. Now, granted, it's not all super long range stuff. So while something like a gunnery team can be a decent option here. It's not always uh, the best thing. So I'm gonna try and do, uh, like maximize the front arc shot with max number of dice. And I feel like that's something fun that we can do with this particular ship. Uh, but I'm gonna make this our flagship. And uh, we're going to put Bail Organa on this. And now we've got Obi-Wan Kenobi and Bail Organa. Um, out of the two available commanders at launch of the Clone Wars, I feel like Bail Organa is gonna be the best for a three ship build because he is uh, going to either be able to make everybody get engineering or just kind of make sure that the flagship, you know, it has, you know, engineering to be able to kind of heal um, almost every turn. And so Bale, I think, is going to work best for some for low ship count builds and Obi-Wan uh, is going to be more kind of well-rounded uh, and, and, and work a little bit better on higher ship counts uh, as provided all of those ships have redirect. So I think Bale is the commander of choice for this particular build. Um, also, because I'm going to want to be doing a lot of concentrate fire commands with this particular ship, not all concentrate fire. You know, it's it's it's, it's a little bit of a blend, and I'm certainly going to have to do some squadron commands as well. So I might be doing some squadron commands. This is my main big carrier, um, so it's going to be kind of a toss up between turns where you're doing squadron and doing concentrate fire. And ultimately, what I would prefer is to have a second acclimator, and that one is more of a dedicated carrier, and this one can maybe be a, a concentrate fire ship, and the other one can be. Um, you know, uh, can be the uh, carrier, but uh, this one's going to have to do a little bit of both, and that's one of the downfalls of having only one starter. But let's say we do run a concentrate fire command. You know, uh, we're, here, here's some things that we're going to do with this to make this one have a really nice, big, strong, you know, anti-ship shot. Um, I'm going to start off um, with a turbo laser, and I'm going to use swivel mount batteries. This is uh, one of those cards that I'm not super crazy about because we're going to really want to be shooting out of the front arc here, and for only one point more, 
I feel like Spinal Armament is, uh, you know, overall a better card. It also increases my rear arc in case somebody gets around behind me. Um, but uh, and 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 of course doesn't doesn't you know reduce my ability to shoot out of other arcs. But in this case, Swivel Mount Batteries is going to be real nice. <clears throat> One of the things I like about it also is that it can potentially allow me to roll uh, a black die at long range. And that's a real nice thing. I mean, I've got three red out of the front, and if I'm shooting somebody at long range, I can still, um, I can still, uh, you know, take one of the, uh, the the black die from the from the left or right side, and have those go towards the front arc, uh, even at long range. And so that's that's really the benefit you get from swivel mount batteries, even though there's a cost uh, or a couple of costs if you want to, you know, re-swivel it. It's going to cost you a concentrate fire token, which you might have if you're doing concentrate fire commands fairly routinely. And it's nice to at least have the the token available <clears throat> now um since we've got that we've got our swivel mount batteries um f instead of weapons instead of gunnery team for our weapons team which is certainly you know something that we will want to do from time to time as when we are doing you know concentrate fire commands a lot on a on a particular ship i wanted to add clone gunners here clone gunners is also going to trigger uh, off of concentrate fire and it's going to also trigger off of concentrate fire tokens assigned to other ships uh, in which, if as long as everybody has the token, uh, you know, at some point, that's going to be helpful. Um, it's going to take a little bit of concentrating fire early on, and then we have, you know, we have those ability to reroll a little bit, and as well as to fuel this card. But this is a weapons team that's actually going to be adding a die to my attack pool, which is also very, very nice. Something else that is going to stack with my concentrate fire. So now I can actually get all three colors at long range, which is actually really cool. Um, and so I think that's a, a pretty cool thing that the Republic has has the ability to do in with this kind of ship. You know, having uh, having three red, a black, and a blue at long range, and then you've got three more. So <clears throat> if somebody actually gets manages to get into close range, you're gonna have nine dice on them uh, with at least one of them guaranteed to be in accuracy, and that's before you add your concentrate fire die. And so I like that. And there's, there, we're not done there because we also got clone Captain Zach. Um, and, and, you know, he's going to work from their side or rear zones because, again, we may have to, uh, you know, turn things sideways or, or do something else. But uh, but he's also going to give us the potential to add a die. So if somebody does not, you know, doesn't stay in our front arc, uh, we can also, um, you know, kind of buff up those other zones as well. So if we happen to turn it sideways, we're going to have one, two, three, uh, four. We can get our blue die from the front arc shooting sideways, right? Or, 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 or even a black die from the front arc shooting sideways at long range. Um, so we can look at three, four, uh, three, four, five, six, seven potentially out the side arc if we needed to, if we had to concentrate fire. You know, so you can you can definitely do a lot there. And I think it's uh, you know you have to do as much as you can with as few options as you can with something like this. <clears throat> now. Since we do have black dice at long range, I wanted to use a black critical effect, uh, and I think assault concussion missiles is probably still my favorite. Um, of course, that's going to be one that's going to uh, also do additional damage on the sides. It's uh, probably, in my opinion, I think it's probably a good candidate for the best critical effect in the game, uh, in that it pretty much always works, uh, and uh, and and it's it's a lot of damage. You know, it, it's not putting an extra face up, but in a lot of cases that you want that extra damage face up anyway and this is just kind of guaranteeing that that many extra damage so uh, i really like assault concussion missiles on this one and the fact that it can now trigger at long range is awesome um, you could also make the argument to drop clone gunners and instead uh, use uh, ordnance experts it's going to let you re-roll up to two dice black dice when attacking and that's also going to work it's going to become a little bit more valuable as you get closer uh if you spent the concentrate fire command even though you get the one black die from swivel mount batteries you can add, you know spend the concentrate fire dial to add another black die at long range so you could have two black dice at long range and re-roll both of those that one also works but i think it's uh probably a little bit more in your best interest to stack some some concentrate fire some like some some uh, tokens to be able to reroll but then you also have the clone gunners 
and uh, and then you get the extra dice that way as well. So um, <clears throat> I just I really like I, I like this. It's, it's able to do a little bit of a lot, a little bit with a lot. Um, and, and since this is our flagship, I do want to put uh, electronic countermeasures on there in case somebody uh, ends up getting that one accuracy back at us. I don't want to lose my ability to brace when I really, really need it if I get a similar really large shot back at me. And that's uh, that's kind of putting a little bit of everything on the flagship. Now, um, if if I had multiple acclimators or whatever, like this might not be, I might not need the ECM, I might not need, you know, Clone Captain Zack on the ship that's trying to forward, you know, shoot straight f straight forward. And there's certainly a lot of other options and different ways you could build a ship like this, but this ship has to kind of do a little bit with uh, with a lot. So that's kind of the uh, purpose behind this particular setup. Plus, some of these uh, upgrades are also very expensive, and I wanted to be able to fill up a 400-point fleet. And, and so that's uh, that's another uh, influence into the upgrades that I've chosen. Um, so now we've got some consulars. Now I'm going to use one of each of the two different consulars. We're going to use a Charger C70 uh, to be our, our shootier ship. And uh, for that one, we're going to start off with uh, Spinal Armament. Now, I, I want this one to uh, be able to do some anti-squadron shots if needed. Um, and while the acclimator w might lose a die because of its um, swivel mount batteries, it still will be able to make those shots, even though if it's losing one. Uh, the Charger C-70, I don't want him to like lose that die and not be able to make squadron shots or, or, uh, at all. Um, he's going to be running engine techs. Uh, for the support team to get a you know super more maneuverability, which is always nice. Uh, we're gonna run uh, extended hangar bay uh, because hey, we're gonna, we need we're gonna have a lot of squadrons here, and we need the ability to do a combination of both squadron and concentrate fire, um, and you know a little bit less with nav. This one will want to nav a little bit more, uh, and, and and of course that makes sense. Um, but, uh, but yeah, when we do squadron commands, you know, I want to be able to do a little bit more. And, uh, and for here, for defense, uh, because I only have three ships, I'm going to put expert shield tech on here. I don't have Obi-Wan to, uh, to give me that, so I want to be able to have a little bit more. And then when my shields are finally down, I want to be able to get uh, a little more out of that. Now, uh, we're going to move on to our other consular, which is going to be the armed cruiser. And the armed cruiser is going to de-arm itself. Um, oh, and it's going to go with the Radiant 7 title. By the way, the RC-70, I forgot to put, is going to run Swift Return. Uh, Swift Return is going to give us a little more maneuverability combined with engine techs. Is going to let this one kind of weave in and out of obstacles, try and keeping its front pointed at the enemies, and, uh, and then hopefully being able to have a squadron command lined up uh, at just the right moment as well. <coughs> So, what else do we have in here? We've got uh, we've got our acclimator. We don't have a title on this one. This is the only upgrade slot I think I'm not using on this ship uh, here as the title. Um, going down to the armed cruiser, we're going to do a couple of things now. Radiant Seven reduces the number of upgrades I can put on here because I can't put um, my ordnance, but I do gain access to fleet support, and I, I do uh, I do certainly like. The ability to do some some fleet support on on this guy. Um, so w since I'm going to be running some bombers, I want to have a bomber command center on here, uh, and that's just certainly going to be a nice thing that uh, that I'd like to be able to run. That's not uh, not something I would put in every build, but it's also going to use up a lot of my points. Uh, for for this one, I'm going to use a defensive retrofit here as well, and uh, I think advanced projectors has a little bit of use uh, here because. Uh, advanced projectors is is going to you know it's basically a lot better now since uh, with XI7 you can still put one everywhere, which I like and uh, you know the, the, this doesn't have a whole lot of shields but let's let's help it survive just a little bit more let's help it survive just a little bit more um, I'm going to give this guy engine techs as well it's uh, it's a very uh, very expensive uh, expensive upgrade that's going to let this consular really maneuver and help maybe get in close enough to get some uh, get some shots. Uh, and and then for here we're going to put the clone navigation officer. Uh, this is you know this is kind of more of a support ship with its bomber command center. But the clone navigation officer is is going to uh, give out some extra tokens. So if we want to give out some nav tokens or some squadron tokens, or even concentrate fire tokens like we were talking about earlier with the acclimator one, and then those clone gunners, the clone navigation officer 
is uh, is going to be able to help facilitate some of those commands. He, well, he won't be able to give out engineering commands. We've got Bail Organa to kind of hand out the engineering dials, which are even better than commands. And that is certainly nice to, uh, to be able to have. Uh, and I think that's actually all of our upgrades. So on, on both of our consulars, we used every single upgrade. Now, I don't really recommend doing this, but this does get us up to 267 points, which leaves us just a little bit of room to max out on our squadrons. And uh, max out on our squadrons, we will do. Now, if you've got one squadron pack, you can't run everything here, right? You can only run two of your Delta Seven Aether Sprite Jedi's, and you've got four of them, so you you know you're not going to be able to run everything. And that's uh, that is actually one reason I think a lot of the Republic squadron packs are selling out. Uh, I was uh, up at uh, uh, one of my local Sci-Fi City store, and I, they they had plenty of Separatist squadron packs still in stock, but all the Republic ones had sold out already. And I think one of the factors contributing to that is the fact that they give you four Delta Seven aces and you can't plus a generic and you can't run them so you you're kind of encouraged to buy at least two um and in some cases more than two i know a lot of people that are you know heavier squadron players may want to do that but if you've only got one um i i think uh you know there's a couple of places we can start you're only gonna have two of anything outside of the v19 so let's start with we do want bombers we know that we want bombers because we've got a bomber command center. So I'm going to start off with two generic ARC 170s. Uh, those, these are great bombers. Um, they roll two blue dice. Uh, a two blue dice with a reroll is just going to be really, really nice. You know, anything other than accuracy, you know, is is going to be uh, is going to be beautiful. Uh, and and so that much I really like. Uh, we're going to want two Y wings also. One of them is going to be Anakin Skywalker though. Anakin is absolutely amazing. He doesn't really need Bomber Command Center, but considering that when he's attacking a ship, that red die, he can really fish for that double now because he's got Adept 2, so he can reroll both of his dice. Then, if he didn't like what he got with the red, he can reroll it again with Bomber Command Center. That's really, really nice. So I love that. I love that, 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 that so much. I said that, 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 but I meant to say love, love, love. And we'll put one generic Y-Wing. That brings us up to four squadrons so far. Um, we are going to put two of our Delta Seven Jedi in here as well. Uh, and for our Delta Sevens, we're going to put Kit Fisto in here. Uh, Kit Fisto is a, a very nice, a, a very, a very nasty uh, anti-squadron pilot, but he also gives us intel. Uh, and 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 that with only four bombers, we don't want them getting locked up too much. Um, Kit Fisto is going to definitely, you know, uh, make it a little more difficult for you know one squadron to come in and tie up all of our bombers. So uh, Kit, you know, intel is not useless now. It is nice, and Kit Fisto is good. Anyway, right? He's got uh, he's adept two. He's gonna he's going to just completely destroy squadrons that 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 try to deal with him. Um, he's he's going to be hard to kill with his special abilities, uh, and uh, and also he's got counter. So, uh, so he, he's just an overall really really good squadron to have, and he's going to support the rest of the squadron force. Um, our other named, and I don't really for the record I don't think I will ever run a generic Delta 7 Aether Sprite. It's not a terrible squadron, but I mean, there's so many other good names. I guess it's, we're going to have to see what happens. I mean, if they put out Eta 2s and lots of other named guys, and then I'm running out of options, then I could see maybe trying the generic Delta 7s for certain builds, but right now I think there's so many better named Delta 7s that I'd rather run them. Uh, so I'm going to put Ahsoka Tano in here. Uh, I think Ahsoka is one of the best uh, unique squadrons in the game right now, especially with her synergy uh, to other Jedi that happen to have Adept 2, like Anakin and Kit Fisto. Ahsoka moves in, lets one of them take another uh, shot with two blue dice that they also get to re-roll both of them. It's just really, really nice. Plus, she has grit, so she doesn't have to stick too close to Kit Fisto on her own. Uh, and of course she's adept one and has counter two and she's a scatter ace so she's just really nice because Anakin and Kit are not scatter aces although Kit's kind of a scatter ace right 
kind of. In some in some cases, he could even be better. Uh, so that brings us up to six squadrons. Two, three, four, five, six. We've got room for two more. And uh, at this price point, I think it's appropriate to drop some V19 torrents because, hey, this gets us two of everything. And two generic V19 torrents bring us up to... 399 and the v19 is not bad either i mean it, it's our escort so it can keep people off of our bombers it can keep people uh, selectively off of whoever we want them to stay off of we can maybe leave kit fisto out or leave ahsoka tano kind of poking out a little bit and maybe they can get attacked and counter but the v19s can protect those folks that don't have counter and as good as anakin is while he's in a y-wing he doesn't have counter maybe if we see him show up in other squadrons he will have counter in other ships perhaps but right now he we i'd, I'd rather him not get shot too much because he he wants to spend his time just uh, you know he wants to spend his defense tokens by the way to just fly away and attack ships so uh, we'll let him do that. And so the two V19s, it gives us eight squadrons. It gives us two of every squadron. And now we've really used up just about everything. Now, granted, you do have two additional V19 torrents. Um, or I'm sorry, four additional. You've got your four that came with your core set and then two that came with your starter. So you're not actually using everything that you possibly can but this is 132 points of squadrons and uh let's let's face it that you're not you'd have a hard time i mean you're not gonna be able to find another two point squadron to go in here and if you could it would put you over 400 right so um this is kind of like what i think of a, as a good starter build for uh, for for objectives i'm only going to use objectives that come in the core set uh because there's a lot of other objectives in here that are available in other um you know, you know, in the campaign packs and stuff, and those did not come in the uh, upgrade card pack. So uh, for this one, I, I, I'm just going to go with most wanted. Um, most wanted is uh, you could put that on your cheaper consular. Uh, it's it's not going to be amazing against every build, but it can get you a lot of points, and it's usually something people shy away from because they know you're going to go for their big ship. Um, for this one, I think hyperspace assault is going to be a good one for the yellow uh for your for your uh, slower squadrons like your arc 170s uh and heck maybe we even put your acclimator uh, have that warp in later on um i'm not exactly sure on the timing with bail organa if he uh i think he still gets his tokens even if he's not deployed at the beginning but i'll have to look that one up um I, I, I would certainly hope you could warp your your flagship in later without having to do that, but that's something I'll have to look up. But I think the, the spirit of hyperspace assault is uh, is a good enough one. I mean, we can always move Bail Organa to a consular if we really wanted to um, if we wanted to run hyperspace assault. But I like the idea of warping in an acclimator into the you know right behind the enemy fleet uh, and you know with maybe two Arc One Seventies and a and a Y wing. Or something, something like that. Like that sounds like a really fun, like uh, you know. And by the way, like only rebels have access to Radus and and the profundity and stuff like that. So a lot of other factions don't have access to warp in. So hyperbase assault is is one of those um, those objectives that you know got played a little bit in the in the early days of the game. But I don't really see them getting played as much anymore because they don't feel as unique. But now that we've got two new factions, you know, it seems like only one of four factions has access to this as a core mechanic. So now maybe we'll see a little bit more. Um, and then for our blue, uh, I think this is a good opportunity to run superior positions. We have uh, we have a really good squadron presence. Um, and, and since we have so few deployments, you know, being able to deploy everything second is going to be great. Uh, but but with so with so many squadrons, I think we're going to have ample opportunities to win the squadron game and to get behind enemy ships. I mean, Anakin alone makes for a good justification to run superior positions because he can just ignore engagement altogether. He's like he is he's maybe one of the greatest cards in this entire wave, um, and uh, <laughs> I love him. I just love him. You know, he's smiling in that picture. It's a great artwork, too, by the way. Really great artwork. But, yeah. So those are the objectives I went with. And this, and this isn't, a, granted, I don't think this is a, uh, a a really, you know, great build for the long term. I think there's so many upgrades in this build that you would end up forgetting them. All right? But if you wanted to come up with a 400-point build and you had just a core set and a, and a, and a, well, a single squadron pack and, and the upgrade card collection, or at least were willing to proxy the upgrades and your opponent was okay with that, this is maybe something that you could come up with. Um, 
moving forward from this, if you got an, an extra core set at some point, I would definitely suggest dropping some upgrades, adding another ship, uh, and uh, and kind of going from there. I mean, I think you can take something like this and 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 drop. You know, heck, we could take our uh, uh, our Charger C70 if we just dropped all of the the upgrades off of it. You know, and then a couple off of this guy. You know, maybe advanced projectors, engine techs, and then the navigation officer. Boom! We got enough for a whole another ship just by kind of trimming those down a little bit. The consular is already good. We could duplicate that. Boom! We've got you know, we've got four more points to spare. Now we've either got a bid, we've got a whole another deployment, a whole another activation. You know, things like that are uh, are usually a little bit more in line with good things. And this one we can change up a little bit too as well, but. You know, so like th there's there's ways that you could change the build up, but uh, but I think this is uh, you know one way to start things off if you uh, weren't able to pick up a second core set. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I want to thank you so much uh, for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments section, uh, and uh, you know. Let me know what kind of builds you want to see next. Um, you know, we have limited options on what we can really do, and uh, you know, with 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 the Republic and the Separatists right now. But we know we're going to be getting some more stuff in the first quarter of 2020. Looks like a February release for the next wave, uh, which is likely to be two ships. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, right now, I do have a winner to announce. So uh, uh, the winner uh, today's winner is going to win an Armada upgrade card collection. So if uh, if your name is Adam Hudson. Congratulations, Adam. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for leaving a comment. You have won this day of Life Day giveaway for an Armada upgrade card collection. Go ahead and shoot me an email. You can find that on the back end of my channel, and I'll get your uh, address, and we'll get you squared away, and I'll get that shipped out to you. Uh, just a reminder, everything that does not get uh, claimed here will roll over into Patreon uh, uh, giveaways. So I'll give you guys 30 days to claim this stuff and then it rolls over to patreon so patrons are going to get extra chances all right guys that's all i've got for you today i want to thank you all so much for watching big thanks to my patrons as well you guys are amazing uh be sure to check out the the uh the giveaways uh you know they're always running even if you don't win this one uh also check out the links in the description below uh if you're interested in becoming a patron or you want to buy some merch the code crab 20 is going to save you 20 percent on all the merch in my store all the way uh, through the rest of 2020 i will talk to you guys later i want to thank you so much and as always have a great day.